Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I'm here with Our Daily Bread. And for today, we have the book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, Judgment on Moab. Against Moab. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Woe to Nebo, for it is plundered. Kirjathaim is shamed and taken. The high stronghold is shamed and dismayed. No more praise of Moab. In Heshbon, they have devised evil against her. Come, and let us cut her off as a nation. You also shall be cut down, O madmen. The sword shall pursue you. A voice of crying shall be heard from Horna, her own name, plundering and great destruction. Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. For in the ascent of Lihith they ascend with continual weeping. For in the descent of Horonaim, the enemies have heard a cry of destruction. Flee, save your lives, and be like the juniper in the wilderness. For because you have trusted in your works and your treasures, you also shall be taken, and Shema shall go forth into captivity, his priests and his princes together. And the plunderer shall come against every city. No one shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed as the Lord has spoken. Give wings to Moab, that she may flee and get away. For her city shall be desolate, without any to dwell in them. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. Moab has been at ease from his youth. He has settled on his dregs and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into captivity. Therefore his tastes remained in him, and his scent has not changed. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I shall send him wine workers who will tip him over and empty his vessels and break the bottles. Moab shall be ashamed of Shamash, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence." How can you say, we are mighty and strong men for the war? Moab is plundered and gone up from her cities. Her chosen young men have gone down to the slaughter, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near at hand, and his affliction comes quickly. Bemoan him, all you who are around him, and all you who know his name. Say how the strong staff is broken, the beautiful rod. O oh, daughter inhabiting Divon, come down from your glory and sit in thirst, for the plunderer of Moab has come against you. He has destroyed your strongholds, O oh, inhabitant of Aurora. Stand by the way and watch. Ask him who flees. Ask her who escapes. Say, what has happened? Moab is shamed, for he is broken down. Wail and cry. Tell it in Arnon that Moab is plundered. And judgment has come on the plain country, on Holonon and Jah Jahaza, Jaza, excuse me, and Mephath, on Dibon and Nebo and Beth Diblathaim, on Kirjathaim and Beth Gamul and Beth Maon, on Kerioth, on Basra, on on all the cities of the land of Moab, far or near, the horn of Moab is cut off and his arm is broken, says the Lord. Make him drunk, because he exalted himself against the Lord. Moab shall wallow in his vomit, and he shall also be in derision. For was not Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves? For wherever you speak of him, you shake your head in scorn. You who dwell in Moab, Leave the cities and dwell in the rock, and be like the dove which makes her nest in the sides of the cave's mouth. We have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceedingly proud of his loftiness and arrogance and pride and the haughtiness of his heart. I know his wrath, says the Lord, but it is not right. His lies have made nothing right. Therefore, I will wail for Moab, and I will cry out for all Moab. I will mourn for the men of Kirheres, O vine of Sibma. I will weep for you with the weeping of Jazer. Your plants have gone over the sea. They reach to the sea of Jazer. The plunderer has fallen on your summer fruit and your vintage. 
Joy and gladness are taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. I have caused wine to fall from the wine presses. No one will tread with joyous shouting, not joyous shouting. From the cry of Heshbon to Elia and to Jahaz, they have uttered their voice from Zoar to Horonim, like a three-year-old heifer, heifer. Uh, for the waters of Nimrim also shall be desolate. Moreover, says the Lord, I will cause to cease in Moab the one who offers sacrifices in the high places and burns incense to his gods. Therefore, my heart shall wail like flutes for Moab, and like flutes my heart shall wail for the men of Kehariz. Therefore, the riches they have acquired have perished. For every head shall be bald, and every beard clipped. On all the hands shall be cut, and on all on the loins sackcloth. A general lamentation on all the housetops of Moab, and in its streets. For I have broken Moab like a vessel in which is no pleasure, says the Lord. They shall wail how she is broken down. How Moab has turned her back with shame. So Moab shall be a derision and a dismay to all those about her. For thus says the Lord, Behold, one shall fly like an eagle and spread its wings over Moab. Kerioth is taken and the strongholds are surprised. The mighty men's hearts in Moab on that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. And Moab shall be destroyed as a people, because he exalted himself against the Lord. Fear and the pit of the snare shall be upon you, O inhabitant of Moab, says the Lord. He who flees from fear shall fall into the pit, and he who gets out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For upon Moab, upon it, I will bring the year of their punishment, says the Lord. Those who fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of exhaustion, but a fire shall come out of Heshbon, a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the brow of Moab, the crown of the head of the sons of Tumult. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Shamash perish, for your sons have been taken captive, and your daughters taken captive. Yet... I will bring back the captives of Moab in the latter days, says the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this chapter. I know I've read this chapter before, and I had some different things to say about it then. I know that um, I spoke about those who they received work and guidance from the Lord, and they abused that responsibility that the Lord had blessed them with by using it to fulfill their own pockets and to kind of uh, fulfill their own needs rather than using the responsibilities that the Lord has blessed them with to be a blessing to others as well. Um, and I'm mentioning this specifically um, because there's a certain scripture in here that actually reminds me of um, something from, I believe it's First Samuel where, where um, Saul, he, he um, decides to do his own thing. Instead of uh, killing all the Amekalites, uh, or the people of Agag, I'm trying to remember. I get them mixed up, but he was actually commanded to kill every last one of them, including the the men, the women, the young, the old, even all the livestock. And he decided to keep some of that for himself. So right here in Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 10. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. Right there, that is kind of um, bringing us back to Saul, who, again, he was commanded to kill every last one of them, including the livestock. And he actually kept some people alive, including some of their livestock. Um, and because of that, we see punishment for that over 500 years later in the book of Esther. Um, but nonetheless, also reading that as well kind of reminds me of... Um, certain certain priests or pastors in different organizations of church who they perhaps maybe skimmed some of the tithing money for themselves or used that money that was given for the house of the Lord for themselves. Um, so that's kind of what I'm reading as well. It's, again, it, it's kind of like 
using your ministry to line your own pockets rather than giving it back to those in need. Um, and, and that's why I actually don't even like to charge on this channel as well. Um, no thanks. I, the Lord provides all I need and that's it. Um, but, but nonetheless, so it's bringing attention to that, but also, um, another sin that Moab has committed is exalting themselves over the Lord. So not only have they been possibly using some of the responsibilities that the Lord has blessed them with to do to line their own pockets, but also they've been trusting in their own works. They've been trusting in their own ways. And we know that our own ways are wicked when we are acting separately from the Lord um, and not carrying out his will, but also trusting in their own treasures as well. And that also leads down the slippery slope of putting uh, idolatry in their own treasures and their own works and their own means over the Lord. So that's when the Lord's kind of becoming a bit more of an afterthought and that in itself is, is a sin. Um, so again, their sin was that not only were they, some of them possibly abusing the responsibilities that they had been given, they were also possibly making idols out of their own ways or their own works or their own lifestyle um, and their own treasures. And by doing that, neglecting those in need. Um, and I say that because right here we see in Jeremiah chapter 48, verse um, 26 and 27, make him drunk because he exalted himself against the Lord. Moab shall wallow in his vomit, and he shall also be in derision. For was not Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves? For whenever you speak of him, you shake your head in scorn. So right there, I want to bring something up really quick. I think it's very interesting that the Lord uses this imagery. He um, says, make him drunk because he exalted himself against the Lord. So we already see that the Lord is um, kind of already writing out the, the sin that was committed against him. But also, make him, or Moab shall wallow in his vomit when you get really, I don't know if any of you watching have ever just gotten really, really drunk, but you know, every, everybody should already know at this point that when you, when you're really drunk, your body's going to reject that and it's going to make you throw up to kind of preserve and save you because technically we have to remember that alcohol is poison. And that's kind of what um, the people of Moab have been doing. They've been indulging in things that have been poisonous for themselves. So now they're going to wallow in their own vomit. And this is actually to preserve them, to redeem them from the poison of their wickedness that they've been indulging in. Again, whether that wickedness be abusing responsibilities that the Lord has blessed them with, or perhaps um, wickedness of turning their own possessions and treasures into idolatry, or even just believing in their own ability to do things. And again, kind of forgetting that it was the Lord that provides them with all good things, because also that's true for all of us. Every good thing that we receive is a gift from heaven above. It's a gift from the Lord. So nonetheless, um, there's lots of elements of selfishness in here, but um, selfishness, but also um, turning the other way when others were in need as well. When Israel was in need, they turned their heads. Um, and, and right here um, in Jeremiah 48, 29, this sums up what I was saying. We have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceedingly proud of his loftiness and arrogance and pride and the haughtiness of his heart. And I like this next part right here in uh, Jeremiah 48, 30. I know his wrath, says the Lord, but it is not right. His lies have made nothing right. Because again, they've been deceiving themselves and lying to themselves that everything that they have is from their own works, their own ability. And they've forgotten the Lord who have blessed them, which reminds me that when something that the Lord says, when I fed them, they became satisfied. When they became satisfied, they became proud. When they became proud, they forgot me. And that's exactly what's happening in Moab right here. Um, so reading this was a very humbling reminder that we have to remember that everything that we receive is from the Lord. I mean everything, whether it's waking up in the morning and our breath in our lungs and the heartbeat in our chest, whether it's waking up in a safe place 
place, that's a blessing from the Lord. Whether it's having food and clothing, those are blessings from the Lord. That's why we're also called to pray, to give thanks and grace to the Lord whenever we sit down and have a meal. And also, um, I read in some excerpts after having a meal as well, saying, giving thanks that our stomachs are full. Um, and also just whether we are also, um, receiving money, you know, from our jobs, give thanks to the Lord for that. You know, he's the one that gave us that job. He is the one that has blessed us with our ability to receive income because not everybody has that ability, you know, or if it's a spouse or family, you know, to give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances, even when things don't seem glamorous or that great in the moment, to give thanks in all circumstances because of who He is. He is the one that provides for us all of our needs. And when we ask Him for something, we also know that the Lord is faithful because He is a loving parent. We might be evil and we might, and we would still be able to bless others with things that they ask for. But the Lord, who is perfect and righteous in all His ways, how much more is He able to bless us? You know, and, and, and when we ask him for something, he doesn't just give us what it is we're asking him for. He will bless us with the ability to maintain it, the wisdom to understand that it is a blessing from him. He will bless us by giving us more than what we ask for. Um, and when I say this, this actually reminds me of a uh, King Solomon where Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. He was a young king. He was scared about taking on that responsibility of being king. And the Lord blessed him. So we asked the Lord for wisdom. The Lord blessed him with more than just wisdom. The Lord blessed him with riches. The Lord blessed him with, um, with, the adornments that he received, the Lord blessed Solomon greatly, and he blessed him with the great task of building his temple. So the Lord does more than we can ask him, you know, but nonetheless, that comes back to us remembering that it is the Lord that provides all of our needs, not exactly always giving us what we want in the moment because maybe what we think we want isn't what we need right now in this time of our life. So really, it, it comes down to that because the scripture that the Lord brought me to to really um, highlight this chapter was, um, it comes from Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and I actually did have it on my phone but I'm just going to pull it up on my computer one sec. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So the Lord wanted me to um, bring that scripture to mind too, because when we receive a blessing from the Lord, whatever it may be, what, um, and in this case, I'm going to speak on finances because that's kind of where this is going, or perhaps a large abundant crop, a harvest, if you will. When we receive a blessing from the Lord, it's up to us to give glory to the Lord through that blessing. And that calls for us to give it back. Again, whether that's actually tithing money or perhaps the first fruits of our harvest, or again, if it's a person, uh, a dearly beloved person in our life, that we are called to give that love back, the love that we receive that from that person. We're called to give that love back through praise and thanksgiving of the Lord and treating that person with the same love that the Lord treats us with. Um, things of that nature. The Lord wants us to remember him through the blessings that we receive, lest we become like like Moab, who unfortunately with Moab, Moab had never actually tasted or seen affliction. Moab had never actually gone through anything devastating or leaving them desolate. So now the Lord is going to put him in that position, or him, them, the city of Moab. He's going to put the nation of Moab in, in that desolation so they know what it's like to need and want but then they also remember that everything that they receive is a gift from the Lord. So that's why we're called to remember the Lord, whether we are on top of the mountains or in the valleys, to remember the Lord. When we have all the blessings and everything that we want, 
to give thanks and praise to the Lord, for he is the one that put us there. And when we're in the valleys, to remember to trust in the Lord that he is our provider. He is the one that protects us. He is the one that delivers us from the hand of death. He is the one that provides all of our needs exactly as we need it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this word up here, but I am praying that this message bless someone. And if it did, feel free to like, subscribe. And until next time, I hope all of y'all take care. Bye-bye.